What are equivalent sets? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is a viewer-requested video. I always appreciate those requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. I want to stress that equivalent sets are not always defined like this, but this is the most common definition you'll see. Two sets are said to be equivalent if, and only if, they have the same cardinality. Remember that the cardinality of a set is the number of elements it contains. So that's pretty straightforward. If two sets contain the same number of elements, then they are equivalent. So here's an example. The sets A and B are clearly not equal sets. They don't have the same exact elements. However, the cardinality of A is 3, because A has 3 elements. Also, the cardinality of B is 3. So we can say the set A is equivalent to B, which is written like this. Or you might also sometimes see set equivalents written like this an equals sign but with three lines. And that's really all there is to it, so it's not very complicated. Here is a non-example. In this case, our set C has three elements, and D is the empty set, so it has zero elements. So in this case, C and D are not equivalent sets because they don't have the same cardinality. The cardinality of C is not equal to the cardinality of D, therefore C is not equivalent to D. And it follows directly from this particular definition of equivalent sets that if two sets are equal, then they are equivalent. And that should seem pretty intuitive. If two sets are equal, then obviously they have to have the same number of elements, so they would be equivalent. However, the converse is not true. Equivalent sets are not necessarily equal. We see that up here with our first example. A and B are equivalent because they have the same cardinality, but they are not equal because they do not contain the same exact elements. But one more time, I do want to stress that equivalent sets are not always defined this way. You might read a paper, for example, that just for the purpose of the paper defines equivalent sets to be something different. Just for an example, you could say that you'll call two sets equivalent if they contain the same number of prime numbers. So just make sure if you're talking about or reading about equivalent sets, you understand what definition is being used, but this is the most common one. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you could use a less common term. So this here is just a different word that always means the same thing in set theory. Two sets are equipollent if they have the same cardinality. So if you use this word, equipollent, then you're definitely talking about this definition. However, this word is a lot less common, so it might be more practical to just use the word equivalent. And that's really all there is to it, so I hope this video helped you understand what equivalent sets are. Give me some examples in the comments, come up with some equivalent sets of your own, or equipollent sets as we were just calling them. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions, need anything clarified, or have any video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here. Won't you please come to me? You love it up here, dear. There's a light where I float that erases all black. It makes everything.